Hey, what's up everybody? It's RuTech. Today we're going over three incredible gaming laptops for $1,000. With the holiday season in full force, along with the recent release of 4000 series GPUs, you'll find some great deals on mobile PC gaming devices. I went ahead and looked through dozens and dozens of gaming laptops in the $1,000 price range and created a list of the absolute best of the best. And I'm talking bang for your buck. All three laptops have their own pros and cons, which I will go over. Now, before we dive straight into it, I first want to tell you about digital digital chill mark. DigitalChillMark.com is the best place to get cheap Windows 10 and 11 license keys. If you're building a PC or have built one, but you're still running an unactivated version of Windows, DigitalChillMark has you covered. Simply go to the front page of their website, scroll down a bit, and you'll find Windows 10 and 11 for great prices. And the prices get better. I have a coupon code for you guys to use. Type in Rutech right here, and it'll be instantly applied. Link for DigitalChillMark.com will be in my description. All right, so let's dive straight into it, talking about the first laptop. Oh, and bear in mind, these laptops are in no particular order. However, I will mention my favorite of the three at the end of the video. The first laptop I'd like to talk about is the Gigabyte A7K1. As usual, let's start off with the performance-centric specifications, being the CPU, GPU, and RAM. So for the CPU, it's an AMD Ryzen 5800H, which is an 8-core, 16-thread processor with a base clock of 3.2 GHz and boost clock of 4.4. Although it's a 5000 series processor, not the latest 7000, for the price, it's incredibly capable. As a matter of fact, more than capable for all modern gaming and non-gaming tasks. As for the graphics processor, it has the RTX 3060, which is a very strong modern GPU. It should absolutely be able to run all of your modern day games in both 1080p and 1440p with competitive frame rates above 60 FPS. I'm talking Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, Elden Ring, the new God of War, etc. For reference, a mobile 3060 should roughly give you the same performance as the previous generation's mobile 2080, which is really impressive, especially for this price, although it does draw a good bit more wattage than the 2080. Now, how about memory? This laptop has 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. 16 gigabytes is still a good amount of RAM for gaming nowadays. I've personally never really ran into any issues using 16 gigabytes of memory, at least for gaming specific tasks, only when I was doing productivity stuff like rendering and editing 4K video. So unless you're doing stuff like that, 16 gigs is more than enough. And for storage, you have 512 gigabytes of PCIe SSD storage. As I expected, no hard drive in here as it's pretty outdated nowadays. 512 should be fine as long as you're not installing an absolutely massive game library with a ton of AAA games. Either way though, it's a very fast storage unit and it won't give you any hiccups like you'd get with a hard drive. And if 512 ever isn't enough, you can luckily upgrade with this laptop. Just go ahead and pop open the back and put in another SSD. Now let's shift our Attention over to the things beyond the innards, the screen. It's a beautiful 1080p IPS 144Hz display. IPS pretty much guarantees you're getting really nice, vibrant, and accurate colors. It's also 17.3 inches, which is really impressive for this price range. Usually 17.3 inch laptops will cost you, but Gigabyte clutched up here and is offering this 17.3 inch beast for a $1,000 price point. Let's also look at the chassis. It's a pretty nice minimalistic design. Nothing crazy, you're getting a good old membrane keyboard, a trackpad with actual left and right click buttons, which I'm a huge fan of, and good beefy body, which will allow for some nice airflow. Lastly, the ports, it has a ton. It has one USB 2.0, two USB 3.0s, one HDMI out, one ethernet, one mini display port, and one USB. Pretty amazing and interesting that they give you both HDMI and DisplayPort. Next up, we have the HP Victus. For starters, it has the same CPU as the last laptop, which is the Ryzen 5800H. As I said before, it's an eight core 16 thread processor with a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz. Super capable CPU for modern gaming and other productivity tasks. For the GPU, it actually has an RTX 3050 Ti, not a 3060, which is a decently significant performance performance difference. For example, you'd be able to play Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2 with high settings at 1440p on a 3060, no problem. But on the 3050 Ti, it's possible you might dip below 60 FPS on average unless you drop down the graphic settings. Now if you're a 1080p gamer, then you're totally fine, you won't have to worry about it. But if you're going to hook up an external 1440p or above monitor, it could be problematic for you. Either way though, the 3050 Ti is a 1080p beast and can run all of your modern games in ultra settings at that resolution above 60 FPS. For RAM, you have quite a bit, 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz memory. Now yes, 16 gigs is more than enough, but 32 is definitely better. This additional RAM will give you a small performance difference over only having 16, for example. 
But besides that, unless you're doing very high demanding productivity tasks or playing some insanely demanding games, the 32 gigs won't be much of help to you. And for storage, you're getting a full one terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD. One terabyte is absolutely going to give you a lot more wiggle room than 512. You likely won't need to upgrade your storage down the line as you get more games. Now, looking at the exterior, starting with the screen, it has a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS 144 hertz display. This is a pretty standard display for this price range. 15.6 inches is pretty good, IPS gets you those nice colors, and 144 hertz for the buttery smooth gaming experience. And how about the chassis itself? It's a really aesthetic design, has that nice modern gaming look to it, perfect balance of minimalism and design touches. Last off, ports, one USB-C, two USB 3.0s, one HDMI out, one ethernet, and one SD card reader. Now for the last laptop on this list, I picked out the Asus Tough Gaming A15. Asus tends to have some really solid and reliable options when it comes to gaming laptops, so let's see how this A15 holds up in particular. For starters, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 6800H, which is a small upgrade over the 5800H. You're getting the same 8 cores and 16 threads, with the base clock being 3.2 GHz and boost clock being 4.7 GHz. It's a great processor, but it's really not that much faster than the 5800H. Very minor difference there. Either way though, phenomenal CPU for the price, and will give you no issues whatsoever. For the GPU, we're looking at an RTX 3050 Ti. Like I said earlier, it's a 1080p beast. All modern games will run flawlessly at 1080p at max settings, and most games will also run at 1440p, but you may have to mess with the graphics settings a little bit. And for memory, there's 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Now I know DDR5 sounds very entrancing and new, but it doesn't affect gaming performance drastically, unfortunately. There is a difference, but it isn't huge. Regardless, 32 gigs of RAM is a lot of memory and will absolutely be more than you need for gaming tasks, as well as the productivity stuff that you're trying to get done. In storage, you're getting a whole terabyte SSD, so lots of space to put all of your games and files, and you likely won't need to upgrade for a good while, or ever. Moving on to things beyond below the keyboard, for the screen, we're looking at a 15.6 inch 144Hz display using an IPS panel, so nice bright colors with a buttery smooth refresh rate. Moving our attention over to the design, it's pretty nice. I personally have never been a fan of anything beyond modern gaming minimalism, if that's a category. So this wouldn't be my first option when it comes to design, but I do feel like Asus still did a good job here. Nothing too insane, but rather a nice and streamlined gaming themed chassis. And lastly, ports, two USB-Cs, two USB 3.0s, one Ethernet, and one HDMI out. A satisfactory IO. Now that we've went over all of these laptops, I gotta pick out which one gets you the best bang for your buck. This is actually kind of tough as all these laptops clearly have their own specific pros and cons, but I feel like only one truly stands out in getting you the most for your money, and that laptop would be the Gigabyte A7 K1. For starters, it's a 17.3 inch laptop in a $1,000 price range. This is almost unheard of. Also, it has an RTX 3060, which is a significant performance improvement over the other two laptops, 3050 Ti's. It does only have 512 gigabytes of storage, but luckily upgrading the storage is extremely easy if you ever need to do so. Also, 16 gigs of RAM is more than enough for gaming. You really don't need any more than that, and you can upgrade the RAM if you needed to. So yeah, all links to discuss laptops will be in my description. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment below or join my Discord, a link will be in the pinned comment. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks for watching, peace out.